Committee. Item six is leaders' questions. Question number one, Councillor Hogg. Question number one to the leader. Uh, Mr. Mayor, I thank Councillor Hogg for his question and quite understand the seasonal interest in this uh, particular issue. The answer is set out as uh, in, in, the, in the printed papers. But what I want to spend some time telling members is about what temporary accommodation is and what it is not. Temporary accommodation is not a kind of a hut or a hovel. It is not a hostel. It is very much like a normal council house. Look at Oldbrook House where a number of vacant, uh, fortuitous vacant flats are used as temporary accommodation. Look at Doors House in, uh, Latch in, in, in Latchmere Ward behind Clapham Junction where we have refurbished uh, facilities there to create temporary accommodation for people. So this is not what might be suggested as being less than good housing. Of course, there are some families in bed and breakfast, but in case of Wandsworth, a much smaller proportion of uh, homeless families will be in bed and breakfast, of which even a smaller, further smaller proportion will be families with children, and even then, further smaller proportion of them will be in bed and breakfast for six weeks or more. So we have a record which is a good record compared to other boroughs. It is not, I mean, one would have to be very realistic about this. This is a real problem in terms of housing shortage. If we can avoid it, we would all want to avoid it, but the council is concentrating on minimising it and successfully doing so. Supplementary, Mr. Mayor. Councillor Hogg. Um, I mean, I thank the leader for that explanation of uh, the definition of um, temporary housing. Um, I, I think we're not minimising this problem. These figures are significantly worse than at the same time last year, so if, if we have a strategy, it's failing. Um, and the cost of accommodating these children has spiralled uh, over each of the last five years. I mean, and, and does the council leader agree actually the much worse cost is what's being paid by these children in terms of their health, their educational outcomes, their future job prospects? Um, what steps will he take to ensure that this figure is lower when we talk about this next Christmas? Well, thank Councillor Hogg for the supplementary. Of course, the, the outcomes for the children and the family are to be regretted and I'm not suggesting in any way that I'm happy about what happens. But let's just put it in the perspective. He's talked about we are not doing enough to minimize it. Let's compare ourselves with Croydon. In June this year, Croydon had 2,723 families in temporary accommodation, of which 360 were in bed and breakfast, of which 210 were families with children. And of course, the record of families who had been in bed and breakfast for longer than six weeks was 168 compared to 10. That was our record at the same time. The boroughs of Lambeth and Southwark refused to, 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 to give the details of how many families had been in bed and breakfast accommodation for six weeks or more. What we are doing to address this challenge, and it is a serious challenge, not just for this borough, but other boroughs in London and beyond London, is that we are using every device possible and available to do it. For example, we have 93 uh, private uh, rented sector properties that we have uh, access to, and of which 50 or so are within the borough, and most of them are within London or re within easy reach of Wandsworth. So we're doing everything we can to make sure that reasonable and good quality accommodation, albeit temporary accommodation, is made available to the families who, who are, for whom we have a, a duty under the homelessness legislation. Supplementary. I thank uh, Councillor Cooper for her supplementary and of course you know, just her second limb of her question, well I think pigs might fly if Councillor Hogg will come up with a, with a good solution to this problem. I doubt very much we can expect one. Um, no pun was intended Councillor Hogg, I, I know that you've got two G's in the sentence rather in your word, uh, word name than one. But let's just look at 
what Councillor Cooper was talking about. And I said earlier, 93 properties as we have got on, 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 from private sector. Everything else, if, if, if members here or elsewhere wish to sort of suggest that the properties that they own or they have access to could be made available for homeless families in Wandsworth, of course the department would be happy to talk to them and, and make arrangements so that a homeless family could, could, could have a proper home. We are not leaving anything unturned that we can turn to, uh, to get the best outcome in the, in the very difficult and testing circumstances. Question number two, Captain. Question number two to the leader. Slightly despair at this question because I think uh, um, what Councillor Hogg seeks to ask, I have no way of uh, knowing or answering. Um, I'm not seeking, Mr. Mayor, a seat at the Brexit negotiating table. Um, I'm not uh, privy to what is happening in the government. Uh, what I am awaiting is that uh, there will be some clarity of uh, what the situation might be. Once it will be no different from any other part of the United Kingdom. We might want to be proud and want to stand alone in many other respects, but on this we are no different from any part of the United Kingdom. So when clarity emerges, Councillor Hogg will get his answer. Um, Councillor Hogg, I, I thank the leader and I, I do take his point that it's, it's still early days on this and I, I hope we will uh, find time for a fuller debate on it later this evening, but even so, I'm, I'm not sure that answer's really good enough at present. I think local people will want to know that the council is monitoring the impact and are looking to mitigate it. Local businesses will want to know the council's reaching out to them and listening to their concerns. I presume the leader is feeding into government uh, and to the decision makers. Um, and if so, I think councillors, public and businesses will want to know that the council <coughs> is taking an evidence-based decision, that it's actually building up data through the chief executive's office or elsewhere on the potential impact of this huge change. Mr. Mayor, um, thank Councillor Hogg for his supplementary. I'm, I, I often say to, to people that the role of a borough leader is a very important and a proud one, but I never get a beyond my station and think that the government might seek my advice in these matters. Second supplementary, Mr. Mayor. Councillor Tracy. Um, I wonder if the um, leader would like to um, make any comments about whether Brexit had anything to do with Apple joining us in the borough. Tracy, for her, for her question, absolutely nothing, as far as I'm aware. Uh, I mean, I, it, it, what Apple were looking for was a unique location where their unique brand could combine with a, with a unique location to get most for both, for both parties. There is quite a real possibility that the size of office accommodation they've taken is much bigger than their current UK staff. So it is quite possible that there may be staff from other parts of the EU countries joining them in time. But I'm not privy to whether that was thinking. What I do know is that this evening's uh, BBC News does talk about Tata Steel uh, changing its mind about closures in Wales, Rotherham and elsewhere because of the Brexit situation. And in fact, we're going to have renewed investment in our steel industry and preservation of jobs. So there are some good things that do come out of that, the, the events of last June. Question number three, Councillor Humphreys. Question three to the leader. Um, I, I would thank Councillor Humphreys for his question. Um, the answer is as it is. My, my, my view uh, about this issue is that uh, it's a laudable aim and a correct aim that uh, we should seek to re reduce uh, carbon uh, dioxide uh, emissions and uh, reduce the carbon footprint of, of, of development uh, in the country. But uh, the device being suggested uh, by the new mayor is, I think, an inappropriate one. In my view, the right device is the building regulations, which is where, in fact, energy efficiency policies and, 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 and the way of delivering energy efficiency is, is rooted. Okay, supplementary, supplementary. Um, would the leader perhaps agree, I, I, I share his sentiments exactly and our need to preserve our 
track record on, on housing in the borough. But perhaps the leader might share my scepticism as well that this target may not be a, um, as long lasting as it perhaps seems to be at the moment, seeing as the current mayor's track record in uh, U-turns and broken election promises uh, is it such so far in his term that perhaps this is another one that may not be so long lasting after all. Thank Councillor Humphreys for his question and I think uh, he is right to allude to less than wholesome delivery of those very gusty promises uh, Sadiq Khan made on, on the, prior to his election. Uh, certainly we were supposed to have 50% affordable housing delivery, well it isn't going to be. Uh, I think we were supposed to, be, uh, to have a situation where foreign buyers were not going to be able to buy or certainly stopped from buying and I think what he's now going to announce is uh, some sort of an inquiry and understanding the role played by foreign purchasers in the housing and development market sounds weaselly to me and I think it is a prelude to, 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 to abandoning that promise. But let's just come back to this issue of carbon emissions. Every development, and I think Councillor Humphreys more than anyone else as, as Deputy of Planning Applications Committee will know that any d development has a finite amount to contribute to the public purse. However you cut it, you can either have more of this or more of that. But once you have more of something, you will have less of something else on the menu. So if, if the mayor is interested in having 100% carbon reduction, which will inevitably r raise the cost of the development, then inevitably means that the delivery of affordable housing will have to take second place. And if that is the ha case, what happens to his promise of all those houses that he made the, before he got elected? Second supplementary, Mr. Mayor. Supplementary, Mr. Mayor. Supplementary. Yeah, I just wonder if the leader would uh, care to uh, hazard a guess, given that there is this finite, finite um, viability for um, development. Um, is, it, is it likely, do, does he think that um, you know, increasing the amount of CO2 off-site is likely to impact on the provision of affordable housing. Uh, I thank Councillor McCausland for his question. I, I think that really was the thrust of my, my, my answer to, to, to Councillor Humphreys' uh, uh, f second supplementary, really. I think there is a real risk that if, and that's been proved in, for, by experience in the past, that if there are onerous undertakings that developers are required to meet as a part of the planning process, then the chances are that the development doesn't take place. And therefore, 50% of zero is zero. So if you are going to, and, and carbon reduction, of course, will be zero because there's nothing happening. Um, so, so you can have that sort of a situation. And yet the reality is that we are all interested in making sure that we get the right type of development, the right quantum of development, and we get the right return to the public purse. And the menu of the return to the public purse will be a diverse one, and one that in which carbon uh, reduction will have to compete with the other things that we all want. We want more housing we want better schools, we want sort of improved transport links and all of those things have to be paid for by the development and so it can't be that only one bit of that menu takes the full, uh, the larger slice of the cake. Thank you. Question number four. Supplementary? Somebody speaking from uh, yes. Councillor Belton. Oh, Question okay. four on behalf of Councillor yeah. Belton. Thank you. Councillor Hogg. Um, Mr. Mayor, um, like, I'd like to add my own uh, good wishes to Councillor Belton with whom I spent uh, uh, a good few hours uh, last Tuesday when uh, he, he was not particularly looking forward to spending his time in a hospital bed but I think he wasn't particularly worried about not being here so that was a, an interesting <laughs> uh, thing he said. I, I doubt whether he felt the same about what might happen uh, in the parlour of mince pies and, and, the, uh, and the wine. Uh, there's a very detailed answer here, um, and I think uh, I, I'd suggest that that is taken as read. Supplementary? Um, well, I mean, just to fill in, actually, had a, had a text from Tony in the last few minutes, and he confirms he is post-operation alive and well. He adds, uh, missing the chance to tear the Tories off a strip uh, <laughs> and share a, share a wine uh, with the mayor. <laughs> okay. um, so, well, I guess in his spirit, I, I should probably thank the leader for his uh, advice earlier and, and the pun on my name. I think he's, he's always willing to hand out advice. I think whenever 
members have a query about one of his ideas, he always makes himself available to talk down to them, and I think that, that's one of his hallmarks. But I, I can actually share some advice with him, because everyone's been a strategist recently, and in the wake of the Queenstown by-election, all sorts of people have been saying what you have to do, what you have to do 2018. But I can share with him that uh, the unanimous advice is, for goodness sake, keep Councillor Govindia exactly where he is until 2018. That, that's been one of our central strands. But, Mr Mayor, to return to the question, um, you know, the leader will have spoken to residents, as I'm sure we all did in Queenstown, who expressed a sentiment along the lines of, you know, the, these new buildings are all very well, but no one I know is actually going to get to live there. And this is a staggering list of more than 20 tall towers, and m most of us can see them from our homes rising. I think very few of us recall giving, you know, our consent for our borough to be redesigned in this way. So. Does he see any upper limit, either in terms of scale or vulgarity, for what can be built in this borough? I thank Councillor Hogg for his um, advice and his um, good wishes to my group uh, in, in, that, in being led by me. And I think uh, the fact that he won't be speaking in either of the two debates says a lot about his leadership of his group. Um, but, you know, we, we, can, we can trade these, these, but the truth of the matter is that if the height of buildings is an issue for him, then perhaps he will tell us what he has told the Mayor of London, who, uh, who will be drafting the new London plan. Has he told the Mayor of London that there should be a moratorium on, the, on, on tall buildings and what is his definition of tall buildings? What he might not know and what he should be interested to know is currently there is a planning discussion going on for a building in, 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 in Battersea area where the advice from City Hall is jack it up by three further stories. The resistance from this council is no. So in fact, he might want to preach it and he might want to throw out these ideas that uh, you know, everything will be hunky-dory and you know, people, uh, all buildings under, under, under Mayor Khan will be six stories and below. The reality is it won't be. And if he, if he thinks otherwise, he's in some other place. Supplementary Councillor McDermott. Does the leader agree there's a real dilemma here, particularly for the Mayor of London and, and the party opposite, that um, we do need more housing, we definitely need more housing, we all agree on that, and actually tall buildings might possibly be one of the answers. Well, indeed, I, can, I thank Councillor McDermott for her supplementary, and indeed she's right, because I, we have been there before. We have gone from the kind of two and three story and a four story uh, general kind of uh, uh, house building that there was before the war to something much taller and much higher. The truth also is that not only do tall buildings provide uh, need, needed housing, but it also provides additional affordable housing because the values that are driven uh, as a result of building tall are, are, are deliverable through, through additional affordable housing. Uh, for example, the new uh, developments at that sea reach currently under construction will throw up 44% affordable housing. Now, not each scheme delivers 44% affordable housing, but some of them do provide that kind of housing. And so it's, it is a horses for courses. And I think that uh, Councillor Hogg and his, his party opposite, and in fact his party elsewhere, uh, should note very carefully that it's easy to throw this, but, but, but not so easy to live by it. As you can see from, from what's happening on the other side of the borough boundary in Lambeth, they're not necessarily building bungalows, are they? Question five. Question five, Councillor Cuff. Question five to the leader. Um, I thank Councillor Cuff for his question. He's very right to draw attention to, to, to the 3.15 billion uh, uh, announced by the Chancellor in the autumn statement. I mean, what 3.5 billion is, uh, it, that is a large investment in London, but it is also 43% of the national pot for affordable housing, which is the highest amount of proportion ever been allocated to London. And of course this is in exchange for a commitment to deliver 90,000 affordable homes, start, uh, starts on 90,000 affordable homes by 2021. The one anxiety I have 
uh, is that we are already quite away into the first year of those six years and there isn't much to show for it so the ongoing target is going to get stiffer I uh, hope, hope uh, Mayor Khan's up to it. Supplementary. Councillor Cup. Well, to that point, Leader, um, given that the, uh, the target is... Uh, Sharp, do you, um, do you consider it might be possible to earmark some of the sites the council owns to make the grant more impactful? I, I, I thank Councillor Cuff for his supplementary. It's right to talk about that. But I, I, think, I think that at the moment, it's early days... Um, from the announcement of 3.15, I don't think that I've seen anything specific from the mayor's office about how that money will be allocated on a borough by borough basis or whether it will be done in partnership with boroughs or RSLs and so on. But the principle that we, if we have uh, a land available and ready to build on, and we do, we do, uh, then, then, then uh, additional cash might help, uh, help deliver uh, out the outcome quicker. I mean, of course, we've got two estate regeneration uh, schemes in Rampton and, and, all, uh, and, and at Clapham Junction. Uh, whilst we have put 150 million of our own resources into making it happen, uh, the climate, financial climate and development climate has changed, and I hope the mayor will be willing to, to consider supporting not only our own housing zone in Wandsworth, but elsewhere, because I think that's where a large proportion of uh, uh, some of the easily realizable affordable housing could come from. Councillor White, supplementary. The Wandsworth Borough Council recognise to make up for the lack of affordable housing in Wandsworth, but see some have to wait 15 months in temporary accommodation here, that Councillor Govindia, a uh, triumphant trip to number 10 will have to be uh, repeated for a few years yet. I don't know whether I should thank Councillor White for his uh, question because I don't think I've had a triumphant trip, trip to number 10. I'm awaiting the invitation, but if he is privy to, to the post room at number 10, perhaps he'll share with me how has he become so, so attached to number 10's post room. Thank you. Questions to the leader. Time has expired.